Hello, I'm Pamela Oliveira and this is What is Happening in Brazil, a show where Brazil de fato brings the latest news from our country to you. Let's start the show giving the news update from the past week. The U.S. activist Angela Davis came to Brazil for the seminar Democracy in Collapse and for the launch of her autobiography finally published in Brazil, 45 years after its release in the U.S. In São Paulo, she visited the Florestan Fernandes National School, an education center established by the Landless Workers Movement, the MST. Davis spoke about the importance of the peasant and the indigenous struggles. Land struggles are extremely important uh, uh, for uh, people, uh, women and men, who have been uh, deprived of uh, their rights in society. Uh, um, the right to live is a basic right, and that should include land. Uh, land struggles um, help us to recognize how important it is to develop uh, alliances with indigenous people, uh, uh, you know, particularly given the ways in which indigenous people have been stewards of the land. A civil rights icon, Angela Davis, also spoke about what her visit to Brazil means. I feel humble each time I visit Brazil. I I always try to make the point that I think I have a great deal more to learn from uh, people who are struggling in Brazil than, than they have to learn from us. Um, black feminist traditions here are powerful. Uh, and I think the world should know the work of Lelia Gonzalez. There's so many ways in which we can learn from the movement history of Brazil. I hope to um, play a role in, in creating solidarity for your struggles here in Brazil in the years to come. Volunteers, government workers and environmental institutions are rallying to clean up the oil spill that has been hitting the northeast coast of Brazil since early September. Since the first oil stains were found, the Jair Bolsonaro administration has been facing fierce backlash, as several organizations claim that the government didn't take quick actions to tackle the issue. On the 23rd, the Environment Minister, Ricardo Salles, once again claimed that the oil is coming from Venezuela. Even though experts have already ruled out this possibility based on the ocean currents, authorities are still investigating to establish liability, and a court order was issued asking the oil company Shell to provide answers about some of its barrels that were found on some of the affected beaches. Now it's time for our story of the week. Brazil's ex-president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has been in prison since April 7, 2018. He was convicted without evidence in a moment when opinion polls showed that he was a front-runner in the presidential elections. Lula had been elected president in 2002 and re-elected in 2006. He left office in 2010 with record-high approval ratings. Our Brasil de Fato team spoke with the ex-president on the 23rd of October. During our talk, Lula said that his main goal is to prove his innocence. That's my struggle and I will keep fighting until the end. I will fight until my last day so that this country doesn't have one single judge, prosecutor or chief of police telling lies to the Brazilian people. That is the fight, so rest assured that I want to prove my innocence. That is why I say I will not trade my dignity for my freedom. Holding my head high, in here or out there, is worth more than walking around feeling ashamed out there. I say this just so you know that I am calm and I know very well what I want. Lula also spoke about the positive perspectives for the left in Latin America and criticized the Jair Bolsonaro government for selling off Brazilian resources and being submissive to the United States. And although Lula doesn't like to make plans considering his possible release, the ex-president spoke about how he wishes to speak with the Brazilian people. I am happy because people are starting to realize things and I want to get out of here to help. 
I think it's bad for me to be in here while there are so many rats running loose out there, running this country. That's what I think. There is one thing you should know. If I get out, I will take to the streets to talk to the Brazilian people. That's the only way. I will talk and I will call the people to fight against them handing over everything. If my life is harmed because I struggle for the Brazilian people, well, that's the only thing I know how to do. And today, I would say I feel more prepared, more motivated, because I know that we can be so much better than them to take care of this country and the people. O prejuízo que eu causar a minha vida for lutar pelo povo brasileiro é a única coisa que eu aprendi a fazer. Last year, at age 71, the writer Conceição Evaristo applied for a seat at the Brazilian Academy of Letters. Her application challenged the institution and represented a protest against the lack of representation of black women in the Literary Academy. Conceição Evaristo published her first work in 1990. A versatile author, she writes poetry, fiction and critical essays. She spoke with our Brazil de Fato team about her background and the challenge of being a black woman in Brazilian society today. Conceição Evaristo first began her literary career in the 90s, when she started to publish short stories and poems in a series called Cadernos Negros, Black Notebooks. But her journey to literature was a long one. Before settling as a prestigious author, Conceição Evaristo juggled domestic work and school in her 20s. I read a lot in my teens. I thought that reading books would help me find all the answers to my angst. Reading books really helped me to cope with my teenage solitude. In the 80s, she met Quilomboji, an initiative to promote Afro-Brazilian authors and experiences in Brazil. Today, the 72-year-old writer is an active advocate for black culture in the country. I represent a minority as a black person who is in a certain space that has always been mostly white. If you think of Brazilian authors, first you think of male authors, then you may think of white female authors, and lastly, you think of black authors. You think of male authors, and it's even rarer to think of black female authors. Conceição Evaristo believes that, despite the setbacks the country has been facing in recent times, the battle is not over, and victories must never be forgotten. I think that we have experienced some achievements that we ought to reclaim. If not my generation, your generation will. But I think that we also have to take a historical perspective on this. When we think that even though Lula is in prison today, this is a nation that put a worker into power, like the United States put a black man into power. That didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't a miracle. So I think that we have this strength to carry on the struggle. Food, music and culture. It's time for Brazilianism. Most people don't know this, but Pequi has these spines in it. You should never bite on it directly because it will pierce your whole tongue. This is why we slice it before serving it. Pequi is a fruit commonly found in the Cerrado, Brazil's tropical savanna. This dish is typical of the country's central western states. First of all, we have to cook the pequi because it's got a tough texture. Once it's pre-cooked, we add the chicken. Then you can let it cook for about half an hour until the chicken is done. The chicken is almost cooked through. Then you add the rice, mix it all together, and there you have it. Chicken with pequi. If you want to receive news from Brazil, join our broadcast list. Add this number to your contacts and send us a WhatsApp message with your name and country. That's it for now. We'll be back next week. See you!